did you say? Yes. And that's five through eight. Mm-hmm. So you're pretty busy. Uh, pretty busy. Yeah, do you find Yeah, they do. Our building's kind of split up that way oh, where the it? fifth and sixth are kind of doing their thing and seventh and eighth are well, together doing their thing. mine, which is just six through eight, mm-hmm. definitely seventh and eighth are more. Right. And six kind of by itself. So I think it's just the age difference. Yeah. All right, so what do we want to talk about? Let's first of all tell them about you and sure. your background and your history and... Okay. Uh, yeah, I taught at North Jackson High School for a long time, about eight, uh, nine years. Uh, then I was the assistant principal at North Sand Mountain School for about a okay. year. Uh, and then last year I became a principal at Bridgeport Middle School. That's good. Do you like being principal? I do like being principal. Yeah. Do, it's, you, do it, you miss being in the classroom? I miss being in the classroom just because you don't get that those interactions with the kids as much or it's always there at trouble or you, right and you know or, or you miss those light bulb moments sometimes that you get when you were teaching but um you know I, i'm the principal at my home school and in my hometown and that's it's cool. it's it's a pretty awesome job that's cool mine's in colorado and sometimes i think that would be cool yeah be able to, but that would be cool so what did you used to teach? I taught math. Math. Mm-hmm. That's right. Your whole school's a math school, I think. They all like, everybody I've talked to likes math. Right. Yeah. Well, for the most part. Jackson County in general like a lot of math. Mm-hmm. Everybody I've talked to likes math. Okay, so we got some, we also have a, 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 another teacher here today that we're going to talk we do. to. So, and that's exciting. Um, and we're going to start with your after school program. It's called the 21st Century. Right, our 21st century after school program, like tonight, um, if you're watching this tonight and as soon as this is over, you can head on over to the middle school and uh, we're having a family STEM night where the Creative Discovery Museum out of Chattanooga is coming up. They've got nine different stations they're setting up. Um, so they're bringing it to the school? They're bringing it to the school. Um, station on biofuels, alternative propulsion, robotics, construction, nanotechnology, aerodynamics, reverse engineering. Siege engines and energy, so they're doing all that. Yeah, it's 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 pretty cool deal. Uh, and I'm really excited to kind of see how that goes. Um, so they're doing a lot of STEM related stuff in the after school program. Um, also doing some community oriented stuff. I know they before Christmas they went to the nursing home. Uh, there was one night a lady was coming in teaching the kids how to cook, so they cooked Thanksgiving dinner for their families. And all their families came in, and it, it was really cool. I know they're planning on going to the nursing home again to play board games with the residents, and they then that, don't they? they do. And we've got they're gonna this spring they're gonna plant a community garden. That basically, anyone in the community, if you need food or if you want some food, feel free to come get it Who's from the community grow garden. That? Uh, the students are. Yeah, and what did you have an ag teacher there? We don't have an ag teacher there, but it'll be tied in with their summer program aspect of the 21st century program. How many kids do you have in the 21st uh, century? I think we're between 30 and 40 right now. And, and do you do homework in there too as well? well there is some time for homework, but it's not entirely Focus. about homework. We really want it to be about enrichment, uh, about getting the kids involved in their community and developing the whole person outside of academics a little bit. Well, and I know that from talking to you and other teachers, they also, um, a lot of it's project-based. Yes. You guys do a lot of really fun things that they might they not do. otherwise get to do. Like, I know one of them had a whole robotics thing right. and different things that they're not, may not get in the school. Yeah, I don't know exactly what they were doing yesterday. I know they had to go get some stuff to make some slime for something yesterday. You know, the kids were really excited about that. But, um, yeah, they're doing all, you know, every, a lot of our programs built around STEM, so they're doing a lot of STEM-related stuff in there. So for people who don't know, explain what STEM is. Uh, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, and it's really just finding ways to make what our kids are learning relevant. Uh, to career readiness and for today. But it's because, every school, almost like right. every state that I've, mm-hmm. I've heard of. Right. And it's a big deal. And, you know, it's bringing in those things. I know when we were kids, you, you learned math, but you didn't tie sure. all of it together. And really right. it's all, you know, technology requires math and engineering. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it all kind of really ties in together now. Right. And making sure that that we're able to get real world applications for our kids and what they're learning. That's That's the whole point is to make sure that we can apply what they're learning in the classroom. I mean, in the in the real world. Right. Well, and I mean, I think STEM does it that way. Yeah. So, all right. So, 
Um, in your after school program and the STEMs tied in with it, what do you guys, uh, besides that, what else are you going to have going on? I know you said you were going to do some library changes. Is that how uh, Yeah, to well, uh, it does have a lot to do with working on STEM. Uh, we've started looking at, we're just in the very early phases of doing this, but we're checking with our teachers and our students just to see what they would want in the library. Uh, there's a there's a big movement in a lot of places to move libraries more to kind of like maker spaces i guess where people can go in and there's some stem related stuff we don't want to get away completely from from books and all those things right but we want to make sure that 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 space is relevant to what kids need today right a lot of times our libraries and things like that are kind of lost in the 80s a little bit <laughs> uh, because I mean, and it's because that's the way it's always been, and it you know if I, a kid can get you don't have to go to the reference section to get information anymore. You know, it, it's at your fingertips. So we really want to make sure that we're that we're utilizing that space and and utilizing that time that kids are spending in the library the way it needs to be. So we're really looking at trying to incorporate some things that'll make that more effective and more. Well, I know some of the big the big libraries, like, you know, Chattanooga Library mm -hmm. and, and Atlanta Library, and I'm from Denver. Um, I mean, they have big sections of just nothing but technology where right. you can go. And then they have a puppet section for the kids right. where it's more hands-on. Mm -hmm. So they do incorporate that into the larger ones. It's not right. just about, I mean, you can still go check out a book, check out a magazine. Sure. But they incorporate a lot of that other stuff mm -hmm. with it. So it would make sense that we would. Right. So... Um, so then also uh, you have something called Amstar? Amstar, yeah. It's the Alabama Math, Science, Technology Initiative. And uh, Miss Matchin, who's here with me today, she's going to talk a little bit about that because she does that with our 7th and 8th graders. But basically it's like a resource sharing program that the state has where they send certain units. You know, you go like 7th grade science, for instance, would have three units this year and one of them is a semester long and then two take up the other semester but they share the we see, we share the resources that way we're not having to all spend money on the same stuff That's and great. you know our kids can get we our kids get more access to stuff by doing it that way yeah i mean and the big thing is is that it's uh, some of those projects especially more like in science and stuff cost a lot of yeah. money they really do or even the books and the curriculum right. that goes with it so sharing it, rotating, I, sure. I, you know, saves a lot of money. So okay, and then um, what else do we have to talk about? Um, we're going to talk a little bit about. Um, I know, like I said, Miss Match, and she's here today. She's also one of our Dynamic Learning Project innovation advocates. Uh, the Dynamic Learning Project is we talked last time I was here right, about, your about how Google was kind of helping us out at our school and. Really, so tell, tell people real quick. So right. We have time. So um, well, our grant that we got, well, being part of the Dynamic Learning Project with Google allows us to have a coach for our right. teachers. It's a tech coach. That, that was really cool. Yeah, the, and she, uh, Shannon McLean, who was here with us last time, and she she gets to spend time in all of our classrooms with our teachers, making sure that, that they understand how to implement new kinds of technology any kind of technology really to make to enhance student engagement and to make their classrooms more effective and to make the learning more real and more relevant for our students. Right. Um, Probably more 21st century. Yes and so Miss Matchin and then another teacher at our school Nikki Black are our two innovation advocates that are tied with this program and basically that just is signifying that they kind of go above and beyond in implementing those things in the classroom you know and I know Miss Matchin's done some really cool things in her classroom all of our teachers really have you know I mean we've got two innovation advocates but we've got I've seen so much growth from our faculty just from it just from being involved in this program because you know we've got time to really sit down and and get invested in things and and to learn and and Ms. McLean does a great job of working with all of them to make sure that what they're doing ties into their classroom. It's not just a one-size-fits-all thing. Mm -hmm. She's re she really does a good job of saying, okay, well, this may be a good way that you can implement this in, 
and what you're doing in your classroom versus doing it this way in another classroom. So. Well, and I know it's easier for teachers if she does the background work and learn sure. what it is that we need to learn right. as a teacher, and then she just comes and teaches us. Yeah, and like every Tuesday right now, we're doing we're doing Tech Tuesdays where all the kids will come with me for like a character ed lesson in our auditorium, and then she's able to spend that 30, 45 minutes with our teachers presenting a new tech tool. Okay, this is how you would use that tech tool. And, so what are some of the tech things you're learning? Um, I think um, there's a thing called Padlet that's really cool. Uh, I'm going to let Miss Matching explain okay. a lot more of that stuff because she's she's in there with it. And she's, because for any teacher watching, right. it's all really good resources. I mean, a ton of resources that we got. Uh, Flipgrid, I think, is one thing. I don't know if you know anything about Flipgrid. I don't. It's I like a, one. it's like a, the students can record themselves, and it kind of gives student voice and allows you that opportunity for them to maybe explain what they're doing and and record it and send it to you as opposed to just writing it down for so an voice, answer. Like a voice recognition. Right. Uh, so I mean, there's there's all kind of. Uh, it's limitless right now, the things that, that, that we're doing. So it's really exciting. That is cool. I know some, but every year I could go to mm -hmm. training and come out with 10 more new ones. Right. And the thing is, is I don't have time to go through all of these. Right. You know, I can hear what they're about, but to really go through. So if somebody can bring it to me. Sure. Like, I use Google Classroom, but it has taken me. I've been using it for five right. years. But right. it took a year or mm -hmm. more to really learn the background. Right. So and how to make it work. Well, we're going to take a quick break. Okay. All right. We'll be right back. All right. Hungry? How about Cloud's Pizza on Highway 71 in Higdon? Not only do we have pizza with dough made fresh every day, Cloud's Pizza serves a delicious hot food bar, and we make cookies fresh every day. Make sure to order the famous cheese sticks made with that fresh dough and real Wisconsin cheese. And don't miss Fish Fry Friday. That includes catfish, hush puppies, and more for only $8.99 Friday, 4 p.m. to close. Cloud's Pizza, Alabama Highway 71 in Higdon, 597-3100. Open till 8, Monday through Saturday at Cloud's Pizza. Just two big old boys Full of biscuits and charm Beats all you ever saw Been making us laugh Ain't doing no harm Making us laugh The only way they know how that's just a little more fun than the law should allow. If you picture Rick and Bubba University as a campus, uh, we have students graduating cap and gown with their degree in common sense. I thought this was the end. You thought he thought it was it. Here halfway. Here's some water. You're halfway. You know what you thought of? Okay. This, I'm going to do what I got to do. I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get on my face before the Lord. I pray that he, he, he shows mercy and he blesses this country like he has in the past. I'll meet kids on time Thank you for joining us, America. Joseph is in Florence, Alabama. Welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show, Joseph. Thanks for joining us, America. Samantha's with us in Seattle. Welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show, Samantha. Angie's with us in Baltimore. Hi, Angie. How are you? Thanks for joining us, America. We're glad you're here. Allie is with us in Austin, Texas. Hey, Allie, how are you? The radio home of the Dave Ramsey Show. Weekday afternoons at 1 o'clock Eastern on 1420 AM and 106.1 FM KWN. Innovation and quality. Two things you don't normally hear about in a recruitment ad, but you'll hear a lot about innovation and quality when you join the team at Vanguard National Trailer. Vanguard is an industry leader in the production of dry van trailers and composite plate trailers. And right now, Vanguard National Trailer is hiring energetic and hardworking team members to be assemblers and welders, as well as industrial maintenance for first shift openings. And you'll work a full 40-hour week in four days, which means three-day weekends. And overtime is available. Working at Vanguard National Trailer has other great benefits, too, like paid holidays, paid vacation, medical, dental, vision, and life insurance, plus a 401k plan. Full-time work, three-day weekends, available overtime, and great benefits. That's Vanguard National Trailer. Fill out your application today. Vanguard National Trailer is an equal opportunity employer. Apply in person today. Starting pay, 10 to $14 an hour, depending on position. Vanguard National Trailer Corporation. Highway 11 North, turn beside the Premier Healthcare Center on Vanguard Drive. 
Tennessee Valley Net, your local provider of fiber optic high speed internet, TV with over 200 digital channels available, and phone service with lots of extras. Fiber optics from TVN is expanding to many areas. Call and see if TVN is available in your area. 706 657 4367 or log on at TVN.net today. Bundle and save on fiber optic high speed internet, digital TV, and phone service. All from Tennessee Valley Net. 706 657 4367 online at TVN.net. Net. A time-tested financial institution equipped with the latest banking technology, the Bank of Dade, with mobile banking to fit your on-the-go lifestyle. Download our latest app today for your iPhone, Android, or tablet to bank on the go. Check your balance, pay bills, make deposits, and keep track of your account anytime and anywhere with the Bank of Dade's smartphone app. Make life easier by using today's most advanced banking technology to your advantage. Call us at 657-6842 or visit on the web at bankofdade.com. Your hometown bank since 1956, the Bank of Dade. Main offices on Highway 11 North in Trenton and drive throughs on Highway 11 North and Highway 136 West. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. All right, welcome back to This Week in Jackson County Schools. I'm Pamela Stone, and we're here with Bridgeport Middle School this week, and they are a 5 through 8th grade middle school, and they have about 130 kids. So next to me is Miss, how do you say it, Ma Paige Matchin. Matchin. Miss mm -hmm. Matchin. Well, welcome. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. All right. You are a science and social studies teacher. I am. And you do seventh and eighth grade? I do. Okay. That's good. Uh, do you, I know we're probably not supposed to, but do you have a favorite? Um, I really enjoy the seventh grade curriculum better than the eighth grade curriculum, but because um, they're so different. Seventh grade is life science, so it's all about cells and interdependence. Um, and habitat and then eighth grade is physical science so it's more of like the chemistry physics side of science so they're totally different and I'm just more geared for seventh grade last are science. you mm -hmm. so you like bugs do you have a lot of bugs <clears throat> we grew black worms oh. um, which are a lot like earthworms but they're water bound and then we have right now we're growing cabbage white butterflies Growing. Who's ever thought of growing an animal? I mean, that's, <laughs> the way you yeah. word that, we're just growing an animal. So yep. definitely. I mean, I I know what you're talking about, but that <laughs> sounds kind of strange. Okay. And, and do you have any other animals that you keep, like just for the kids to feed or to learn about? I don't. I, I mean, don't our seventh grade pets. teacher has a whole thing of. <laughs> I don't cockroaches. Well, we have some. I don't um, know if they're hissing. They're giant. They're like that big. Oh, they're alive. Yeah, they're alive. Okay. Oh no, they're in a cage and they have egg crates and they run in and out and yeah, I don't go in there very often. No, we have we have a lot of animals and um, things in formaldehyde jars. Oh, okay. <laughs> but we don't have any live organisms. Oh yeah, we got all kinds of live <laughs> organisms. Yeah, the cockroaches are probably the. They're great. The kids love them. They think it's awesome. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. It's just when you become an adult, it's something you try to avoid is yep. having mm -hmm. a cockroach around. Yeah, class pets are yeah. a little bit out of my territory. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and so, uh, and then, do you like science or social studies better? Uh, I would definitely like science. Science? Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. Science. science is hard. Did you find that hard, or is it just something you've always been really good at? Um, I've just always had a science mind. Really? Um, mm-hmm. I really enjoyed science in high school, and I got my science um, concentrations in college so that I could teach. Okay, so tell us about your background. Okay, so I am um, a teacher at Bridgeport Middle. I teach seventh and eighth, and uh, this is my third year to teach. Um, my first year there. Okay. Um, and I graduated from Mississippi State University. So you're not even from here. I am from I'm oh, from actually just... from Hollywood, okay. Alabama, okay. which is right next to Scottsboro. Um, it's between Scottsboro and Bridgeport. So, did you go to Mississippi to go to school? I I did. I went um, to visit a friend one day, and then uh, I had no intentions of going to Mississippi State. And then I ended up falling in love with the campus, and I wanted to go to an SEC school for the whole football experience. And it was just kind of a small town, but still in the SEC, and it was right. just a good. A good fit for me, so. Oh, good. Yeah, I right. enjoyed it. So, and this is your second, third year teaching. Third year teaching. First and have you year taught there. social studies and science all of them? No, my um, <clears throat> my first year I was actually split between. Uh, I was a teacher's aide, and I was split between kindergarten, second grade, and fourth grade. All right. And I was kind of multi-subject. Wherever they didn't, needed me is where I had to go and help. Okay. And then um, I taught fifth grade language arts and social studies. Wow. And now I'm 
So you've done yeah. a lot of everything. <laughs> I've been everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So tell us, um, you are uh, definitely part of that Amstai. Yes. That he was talking about. Yes, I've recently been Amstai trained. Okay. What um, is what is it? Tell <laughs> everybody what Amstai is and what that entails. Okay. It's um, a Alabama math um, science technology initiative, and basically, it's a great way for. Uh, schools who don't have all the resources they need to teach all of the standards as in-depth as they want to, um, to have those resources. And uh, Jackson County adopted in Amstai several years ago and became an Amstai schools, so several of their schools did. Um, so they send their teachers to trainings and the trainings are between three and seven days per unit. Okay. And each grade level has three or four units. So I was gonna say, so, so and then just, you're doing two grade levels, and right. you're doing, now is it only for science? It's just for, well, they'd have the math option as well, but okay, our school do just math. does science, yeah. Okay, and so you had said you had four in one grade level and three in the other? Right. So you've had to be trained seven? Yes. Is that right, did I do my, did I do my yeah. math right? Yeah, yep. Yeah, seven That's a units. lot. Oh, yeah. And it takes a week for each one almost? Uh, between three and seven days. Most of the trainings that I've had to go to have been three to four days. That's a lot. So, yeah, it's a lot and of training, it but it's a school, lot. Or? It is during, well, they offer several sessions throughout the school year. Okay. So teachers can do it as professional development. Okay. And then through the summer, they offer whatever they couldn't offer through the school year. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. So it's basically based on what you guys were telling me. Like you just share resources, so I could just imagine you get a big box or two or three boxes with like all this cool. Like ten or twelve boxes. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's a and lot. And they're like crates. Oh really? Like the big plastic crates. So who drives them around? Is it through? Is it just Jackson County, or is it uh, statewide? Of, it's statewide. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is there somebody whose a, job is just to drive from school to school? Yeah, one of the um, people at our central office kind of heads up where the boxes are and where they're going to be moving and when they're going to be coming and so they're in charge of gathering them all at the central office and then Amstad's as a pick up and drop off. Now does yours just do middle school or will yours go to the high school as well or is it just a middle school it's, one? And it's then grade just the level high so okay. if I'm only trained in seventh grade I only get seventh grade boxes okay. and so But on. still the school district has to coordinate seventh, oh, yeah. eighth and then ninth, tenth, eleventh. And well I th it goes from Lower elementary, yes. I don't know exactly what grade level it starts. It okay. might be first grade or it, it might, they might have a kindergarten unit. And it goes up through, I know, through the eighth grade. And then I'm not sure that they have ninth through twelfth. Right. Well, most high schools have a lab. Right. Which would probably make a difference. Yeah. So, so do you do, is it like lab work that you might do? Yeah. Or? it's. So um, tell us what some things are that you would do. Okay. So they sent us everything we needed for our black worms. Um, they sent us um, directions for feeding them and then all the labs that we did with them. Um, directions, this, they come with student books and all the lab materials that we need um, for a full semester wow. each time, so, or every nine weeks. Usually it's nine weeks and there's one that's a semester. Um, so, I mean, it is packed with I mean, each unit has... Probably more stuff than you can ever oh, get yeah, through. We don't ever get right. through everything that's in the unit, but it's nice to have that resource there. We can get as far as we can until the boxes have to go back. Right. So mm -hmm. when you grew earthworms, did, was there was that kind of growing sea monkeys? Like there's really nothing <laughs> there and then... Um, well, we... With the black worms, they came and they were... Um, or they were in like in a bag and we had to put them in water and we had to learn how to make sure they were at the right temperature and were they alive? make sure yeah they're alive okay when you got them yeah. they were alive yeah they're alive they um, right. carolina science sends them through their um, live organisms website and so um, when you get your amsa kits you get these sheets with your coat on them you put your coat in and they ship them to you in 2 days they um, get them to you so you don't have to wait and there's not organisms floating around in the mill surface for a long time right um, but they get them there pretty quickly and then um, you know we get to get started with whatever the lesson entails okay so what's next what are you gonna do next do you know what your next one is um, for seventh grade I haven't gotten to look through the whole unit um, Amstai is so packed where you are that you don't get to jump ahead a lot. Right. But the next one we're doing is um, reproduction. And so we're going to be looking at plant reproduction and things like that. Oh, Dissecting cool. flowers and 
that kind of thing. Okay. Well, that, I can do dissecting flowers. Mm -hmm. It's better than dissecting animals. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I remember that in high school, and that was about the end of my dissecting an animal. <laughs> I would yeah. not survive on the Alaska wilderness, you know, where they have to take apart their animal to survive. Oh, yeah. No, definitely not. All right, so let's talk about you, you uh, dynamic learning project, which is... Okay. Um, so tell us how that works, what... Okay, so the Dynamic Learning Project is through Google, okay. and we have... Um, and tell everybody, because they missed that one, but, like, you guys, she was trained in Google. Yes, and then Shannon McLean. Did she train you guys a little bit, too? Okay, so, yeah, she kind of has. Um, she is our tech advocate, I guess you could say, for um, if we have any problems or if we want to learn how to do something. Um, Google has recently kind of adopted in the dynamic learning project and they're training several different people to do what Shannon's doing this right. year and it's kind of a trial to see how it goes and how effective it is but Google released a few years ago Google Suite for Education and that's a Google Classroom where you can attach links and you can um, put in documents uh, that the students can go in and, and edit it Google Suites for Education heard of that and um, it's on a you know a normal Google account, and school districts can kind of jump in on it and um, use it. And she kind of was trained in how to effectively use that. Um, and so she then came back to us. And every Tuesday we have something called Tech Tuesday, and it's the last 45 minutes of our day. Okay. And Mr. Colvin, um, he takes the students and he does an activity with them while we get a little bit of PD with Shannon. And so she teaches us how to use a new piece of technology or how to implement a different piece of the um, Google program into our curriculum effectively for our students. Well, that's cool. So, so we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, I want you to tell me, like, what things have you learned? Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay, we'll be right back. At Gross Furniture in Trenton, Georgia, you get the savings, the selection, and the satisfaction of getting the furniture you deserve at the prices you want. Come in, relax, and take your time. Our staff can assist you with the entire process, from expert advice to professional delivery. That's because Gross Furniture is local and treats you with honesty. Just north of the Courthouse Square on Highway 11 in Trenton. Gross Furniture, the home furnishing store that offers you more. We're looking at a pretty lopsided matchup, Jim. Ron, this newcomer has no idea what he's getting himself into. Let's go to the action. Jim, the size difference alone is staggering. Unbelievable, Ron, and this guy acts like he doesn't have a care in the world. What is he thinking? Every day, people tempt fate and die trespassing on railroad tracks. See tracks, think train. Hey, that cold weather is coming, and it's never too early to get your winter supplies from Rising Fawn Hardware and Supply. 4300 Highway 11 South in Rising Fawn. Everything you need to wrap pipes under the house. Winter rise around the doors. Make sure your outside faucets are protected, and keep those drafts from coming through the windows. Get your supplies for fall and winter for the home and farm today. Rising Fawn Hardware and Supply. 4300 Highway 11 South in Rising Fawn. Telephone 706-462-206. 7 1. Methamphetamine affects everyone, your neighbors, your friends, and even your family. Know the signs. Physical symptoms include you may have extreme difficulty sleeping and even insomnia, and you may lose your appetite. Know the signs. Please know the signs. You can seem nervous and anxious and even have paranoia. Know the signs. Overheat easily and sweat without even being hot. Know the signs. Dilated pupils and even hair loss. Know the signs hallucinations and delusions and you can also have tachycardia which is a rapid heart rate know the signs you may have liver damage and loss of skin elasticity know the signs you may notice unexplained financial instability and social isolation know the signs you may have a false sense of euphoria coupled with a strong depression and even risky behavior legal trouble memory loss and repeated incarceration please know the signs unfortunately we do 
Paul Feinbaum. You tell it like it is. This is the SEC. Yeah. SEC. SEC. Well, they all just play one more line, but whoever wins, the other team just have to get out. Don't even play football in the SEC no more. You realize Alabama lost to Auburn last year, don't you? Oh, yeah, that, I laid in bed two days. That's, that's, that's the Paul I, Feinbaum Show, weekday afternoons 3 to 7 on News Radio 1420 and 106.1 FM KWN and Chattanooga's News Talk 97.7 KWN. Have lunch or dinner at Guthrie's, home of the original golden fried chicken finger and the best chicken finger sauce in the world. Guthrie's can help you plan your family's meals or get-togethers with bucket specials every Tuesday, those delicious wings on Wednesday, and platters every day of the week. Plus, get sweet tea by the gallon. Remember, Guthrie's has a party room for small gatherings, too. Guthrie's, Highway 136 West in Trenton, home of those golden fried chicken fingers and the best chicken finger sauce in the world. Guthrie's, not fast food, good food fast. Attention outdoor cooking fans. The Appliance and Outdoor Equipment Showroom at the Upper Sand Mountain Gas District is a gold dealer of Big Green Egg products. The Big Green Egg is miles ahead of anything else. State-of-the-art ceramics, a wide range of easily adjusted cooking temperatures, a stainless steel cooking grid, and a permanent porcelain glaze to preserve that signature green color. It's a grill, it's an oven, it's even a smoker. The most versatile cooking device ever. Truly the ultimate cooking experience. The Appliance and Outdoor Equipment Showroom at the Upper Sand Mountain Gas District is the largest supplier of big green egg products between Memphis and Atlanta, carrying a complete line of products including rubs and sauces, free 60-day layaway with 10% down, plus 90 days same as cash, and financing is available. See us today on Sand Mountain. Take I-59 south to the Hammondville exit, right on Highway 117 to 21620, Highway 117 in Eider, or call 256-687-9386 to learn about the appliance and outdoor equipment showroom at the Upper Sand Mountain Gas District. All right, welcome back to This Week in Jackson County Schools. If you're just now joining us, we are talking to Bridgeport Middle School, and um, this is Miss Paige Machen. 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 I'm so sorry. I am. I'm trying. Machen. That's Ms. okay. Machen. So, all right, and you are a science and social studies teacher, and yes. you teach seventh and eighth grade. And you guys do five through eight, and you have about 130 students. So we have been talking about some really cool projects you guys do. Mm -hmm. So the project that the the school district uh, is, is AMSI, mm -hmm. and it includes basically projects for each school, and they bring the whole curriculum, and then they rotate in between schools. So it's like you're sharing all your curriculum and, and stuff that you would need to do whatever you're going to do for science. Right. That is really cool. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and then we talked about the dynamic learning project, right? Which is this whole Google. Uh, you guys got a grant last year. We did, and right. we have a coach that kind of came along with that. That kind of um, leads it at our school. If I remember right, she was a teacher, and she got pulled out of what she was teaching to actually go get trained at Google. Yeah, she did. Yeah, that sounds really cool. I remember talking to her. I was uh, jealous. I'd love to go to Google and see how they do. They were both talking about uh, Mr. Colvin as well. Was talking mm -hmm. about how cool that was. As a business and computer teacher, that's like the ultimate, you know, how do you oh, do yeah. it all together. And then, um, so you guys are learning a lot, and you guys are doing Tech Tuesdays? Tech Tuesdays with Miss McLean, yeah, right? every Tuesday for um, for the faculty. Okay. And we just learn how to implement new technology into the classroom. So, and like, how to... give us some things that you've learned. Okay, so um, we learned how to do a flip grid, which was new to yeah, me. Yeah, so I don't know what that is. Yes, I didn't know what it was either until we learned it. And basically, you can um, ask the students a question on Flipgrid. Okay. Um, and it's an audio-visual. And so the students is can it like then, an application that you use? Um, it's on the Internet. Okay. You just search, and then you create a task okay. on the Flipgrid account. And so then the students go in and open up the Flipgrid question, and they can um, audio-visual answer the question that you ask them. So it really, um, instead of them writing down, you know, on a Post-it note to turn in something or um, something like that, mm. it just gets them um, to use the technology and use it appropriately for the classroom. It teaches them how to use it appropriately for the classroom. So basically, they don't have to write it. Right, and they I can, can turn it in. Um, you know, they have all these apps so and Snapchat. Do, things do you like have that. to so have like? I mean, because I don't have. I mean, I don't have microphones on my computer. The, the okay. Well, the computer does have to have a microphone okay. to pick up your voice. Yeah. 
Okay, and how do you do that when you've got somebody here and somebody here and somebody here? Well, it does pick up kind of what's behind you sometimes, bit. but it really does kind of focus on the person. Just the that, person. Mm -hmm. Have you tried this with your class? Yeah, I have. So what yeah. did you what did you do? Did you do a test or did you do a quiz or did you just do like a review? Or I what? just did kind of a quick um, in formal assessment. Um, I can't remember exactly what the question was that they had to answer. So you just did one question, it wasn't a series of questions? No, it was just one question. Um, and then they all got on there and answered on the flip grid. And then the fun part that they like at the end of the flip grid, after you've completed the assignment, okay. it shows your picture. And you get to add oh. like pictures and stuff, like sunglasses and stuff to your So does it take frame. a picture of them right then? Or is it the picture that they put on like a Google account or something? Um, it takes their picture. You kind of go through a screen when you go in to answer the question, you know, what's your name? take a picture and then you do your video what what I mean how does it take a picture is it like on a laptop where it has like a webcam the webcam takes their okay. picture see I don't have webcams I have standalone computers too oh yeah see so our, our like. we're lucky enough that we have you know computers with the webcam and the audio so they get to utilize that in the classroom that's good mm -hmm. all right and then what's some other things you've learned so you've learned Flipgrid Yes, we learned flip grid. Flip grid. We learned to um, <laughs> how to use Quizlet Live, which okay. is really fun. They love it, and it's um, more of a review type tool yep. um, or a pre-assessment where the students go to Quizlet Live and they get a code. Right. And they log into it's the like code. your code. My code that right. I set up, okay. um, and they log in to the code and then it sets them up on account and it divides them up into teams. Okay. And so a question pops up on their screen. That you've already pre-populated. That I've pre, you know, I've set up the whole review okay. um, question answer. And the question pops up on all their screens on their team, but the answer's only on one of their screens. So they have to collaborate together to figure out whose computer has the right answer and click it. Oh, so they and all have an answer, but only one of them's right. They, right, they all have answers, but only one of their computers has the correct answer. That's so cool. then they have to go choose it and they have to collaborate. It's a good communication practice and um, team building, but also learning the curriculum and reviewing for a lot of Which tests. one do you think the kids like? Out of all the things if you learned, which ones do the kids like the most? They definitely like Quizlet Live or, or Kahoot, which is kind of the same setup. Yeah, we've used Kahoot. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it is kind of cool. And there's one, I can't remember what the name of it is off the um, top of my head. You turn this little card. Uh, Plickers. Yeah, Plickers. Yeah. Yeah, I tried Plickers this year. Oh, yeah. So, and, and it was okay, except for my phone was small that mm -hmm. I was scanning with. It took a while with. to scan. And, yeah, I mean, you, you had to be just right on there. Yeah. And, it, and so it literally, we got three questions done in almost the whole class time. So oh, I was no. like, Okay, that was a maybe lot of another work. way. Or if I had a big tablet or something, where yeah. it would read it a little bit easier. Where you could but Quizlet, I mean, that was really a lot of fun too. And I've done Quia, which is kind of like a Quizlet. Uh huh. So those are kind of cool too. Yeah. All right, good. Um, so let's talk about what else can we talk about? Um, you guys have a beta club. We do. I'm not actually. I know, but in charge of the beta club, but um, there's two of the teachers that are are Miss McLean, who is also the Google um, Tech coach. And then um, Miss Jennifer Johnson, who is the math teacher for seventh and eighth grade, and they um, take care of the beta club and keep up, w keep a log of all their hours. They have to have. This is community service. Based, yeah, it's right? community service, and they have to be eligible through their grades. Um, oh, so it's only the good students, right? Or the good students grades. that strive to do well are the students who get inducted into the beta club and then they have to maintain a certain average in all of their classes to to remain in the beta club so That's it's a cool. prestigious honor to be that is. part of and i think when you get to the high school you get to wear a rib a cord if you yeah when you graduate, when you, graduate you have a, don't you get a yeah, cord i think you do i think I, I thought, when i used to teach high school i thought that was part of it too mm -hmm. okay well that sounds really good so what is your next project that you get ready to do for, like in your class um for science and then tell us social studies. Yeah, so for um, for social studies, my seventh grade, um, we are getting into civics and government. Okay. Um, we just started in January um, with a little bit, and so that's kind of where we're headed. Um, and it's kind of all new to them because they've they've not ever studied the government before and the different no. types of government. Well, and I'm sure um, it's harder. Do you find just curious? Do you find it harder because? 
you know, their parents have already indoctrinated their personal thinking? Yeah, a little bit. They have, I mean, they're, you know, between 10 and, you know, our school is between 10 and 14, 15 years old. So they definitely have their own opinions about things at this age, you know, and they're starting to develop right. their own opinions. And I work more with the upper level. So um, they have their, they definitely have their own opinions that is interesting to bring out in the government and right. economics and um, things like that. And we also, in seventh grade, do geography. Now, eighth grade is just the intro to world history, and it's up to 1500. <laughs> so wow. it's very, very early world history. Yeah, it's very early. <laughs> yeah. Um, with science, seventh grade is um, life science. So it covers everything from cells to reproduction, and then eighth grade does a little bit of physical, or it's physical science, but we do a little bit of chemistry. We do, you know, um, physics, like Newton's laws and that kind of thing. Um, we do um, EWIT, which is um, magnetics and how electromagnetics work and transfer of information and that kind of thing. A lot different than when I was in school. <laughs> I was like, I don't think, I mean, I don't remember any of this in middle school oh, yeah. it's, at all. It's a more, it's a newer part of the curriculum than, you know, when I think, when I was in school, we did, you know, seventh grade life science and eighth grade physical science. And that was, we just focused on, you know, inertia and gravity and that kind of thing in physical science. And I now, remember growing a lima bean in a bag. That's about the most I remember. That was probably seventh grade. Lima bean in a bag and we saw how tall it is and then mm -hmm. some people had to put it, they were controlled, so they had to put some in a closet. Okay. And some in the sun. To see which one grew. To, right, better. or if they grew tall or if they still had color and then we took data on them to figure all that oh, out. Oh yeah. So, but the ones that were in the shade, like in a closet, grew taller but they came out totally yellow. Okay. So, I don't know what that meant back then, but that's what we did, so. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, we're gonna take a break, and when we do, we're gonna bring uh, Mr. Colvin back on, and we're gonna keep talking. We'll be right back. What's better than saving thousands on a new ride? Saving thousands on your choice of vehicles. Hi, it's LeBron Clark at Mountain View Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, and right now, the choice is yours. Buy a new 2018 Jeep Cherokee Latitude or a new 2018 Dodge Grand Caravan. Your choice, $18,888 or just $2.59 a month with zero down. Shop Mountain View Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Ringo. We're number one for a reason. Cut! Yeah, that was the one, right? Hey, John, did you eat half of my bagel? Uh... Speaking of half, if you switch to H&R Block this year, you'll pay half what you paid the other guy last year. So you did. Smoke screen! You're a fake wizard, John. This is a movie set. Switch to Block and pay half of what you paid your other guy. Half price is a better price. Get your taxes won. This is Rush Gold Peak Gold Train. <laughs> oh, and all points, bullets, and all copper gallery and kimbos. They must be up to something there. Their trucks are all over. You just got very suspicious activity. Ooh, I love it, I love it. Possum on a gunbush ship. Uh, Gary and all them just good old boys have a big sale, and they deliver free of charge. Venus, you dipstick. There's no way they're delivering that much furniture. You just, their trucks are everywhere. It's because of their great prices and service, Chef. They have catnap and recliners for $269, new queen mattress. Sets $299, king size mattress sets $399, memory foam pillows $19.99, queen size chairs, slave beds $299, lift chairs and adjustable beds also on sale. Phoenix, will you hush? I heard all that. I love it, I love it. Check out Comfort Gallery Mattress. And they having a big sale. They offer free delivery and setup. Six months, same as cash. Ooh, free one year layaway and even a no credit check payment plan. I love it, I love it. They're open seven days a week and accept most major credit cards. Good. The Moore family name has built a legacy of trust, compassion, and peace of mind by standing with families during time of loss. Now in our 70th year, the Moore family commitment grows even stronger, from affordable, traditional services to cremation. Our experienced staff stands ready to follow through on you and your family's wishes. Since 1945, the Moore family of funeral homes, North Sand Mountain and Trenton, always dedicated to those we serve. 
innovation, and quality. Two things you don't normally hear about in a recruitment ad, but you'll hear a lot about innovation and quality when you join the team at Vanguard National Trailer. Vanguard is an industry leader in the production of dry van trailers and composite plate trailers. And right now, Vanguard National Trailer is hiring energetic and hardworking team members to be assemblers and welders, as well as industrial maintenance for first shift openings. And you'll work a full 40-hour week in four days, which means three-day weekends. And overtime is available. Working at Vanguard National Trailer has other great benefits, too, like paid holidays, paid vacation, medical, dental, vision, and life insurance, plus a 401k plan. Full-time work, three-day weekends, available overtime, and great benefits. That's Vanguard National Trailer. Fill out your application today. Vanguard National Trailer is an equal opportunity employer. Applying person today. Starting pay, 10 to $14 an hour, depending on position. Vanguard National Trailer Corporation. Highway 11 North, turn beside the Premier Health Care Center on Vanguard Drive. All right, welcome back. I'm Pamela Stone, and we are this week in Jackson County Schools. And I have Bridgeport Middle School here, and we are talking to the principal, Mr. Colvin, and Miss Matchin. Okay. Matchin. <laughs> I was going to get it right this time. Anyways, Miss Matchin. And she is a science and social studies teacher, and she teaches seventh and eighth grade. We've learned a lot. We've been talking about some really cool growing earthworms. Um, and the fact that they swap big curriculums like every uh, few weeks or like even a semester. And uh, it's called the, the Amstai. Amstai, mm -hmm. okay. And that uh, we just talked about the beta club and they have a beta club and all the technology things that they learn on, the teachers learn on Technology Tuesday, which some of them, I think I'm gonna try a couple of them. Those are really fun. Yeah. So, all right, so uh, now we're gonna talk about some other things. So. Uh, in case you don't know, this is Mr. Colvin. He's the principal of the school. So let's talk about big school events now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I know you guys got Pi Day coming up in March. Yeah, we got Pi Day coming up in March. Okay. I know last year we really started doing some stuff for Pi Day. Basically, everybody in the building is finding something mathematical to do in their classrooms, um, something related to 3.14, which is Pi. We have a big pie eating contest. I know we have a hula hoop contest. If it's got to do with a circle, we figure out a way to make it work. What day is it? March? Do you know? March the fourteenth. Fourteenth. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's it's pretty cool. The kids really liked it last so year. So they really get to eat pie too. Real oh pie. yeah, we had. I think I think we found a little moon pies. Everybody in the building got a little moon pie oh. and stuff that day. And I might have to bring pie for my students. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's a pretty cool deal. <laughs> okay. Do you get t-shirts? Um, no, we don't have t-shirts yet. Okay, they could tie dye your own or something. Yeah. Okay. Now we had we had a contest last year where the kids could make their own. Okay. So I mean, and we got some pretty creative, creative t-shirts. T-shirts out of that deal last year. That would be cool. All right, and then you have a coke sale coming up for a fundraiser. Yeah, a coke sale coming up for a fundraiser just to make sure that you know we've got the money that we need to to do the things that we've got to like do. Buy the pipe. Yeah. Uh, that I mean just things that we've got to do to keep the school running and you know everybody for the most part I know they don't drink coke they drink water and we're selling Dasani water too so oh really any kind so of, do you buy is it diet coke uh, any kind of coke product okay any coke they, product. are they bottles they're bottles yes and how be, much? Uh, it's uh it's going to be 24 dollars for a case for a case how many are in a case uh 24 24 so, so it's, it's a dollar piece. piece yeah that's not bad so that's ch cheaper than a lot of places. Yeah, that'll yeah, that'll but. be that'll be starting soon. Um, like probably in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Do you have a goal to try to? Uh, you know, we'd like to. Ten thousand dollars. Oh, sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, you know, anything over about two thousand dollars would be huge for us. I, I don't think people understand how much schools don't get. I right. mean, w schools do not get really any money except for to maybe pay a little bit of the electricity or mm -hmm. a little bit sure. of stuff. So the rest and all the curriculum and the supplies, I mean, right. besides the teachers buy a lot of them, mm -hmm. but the rest has to come from fundraisers. Sure. So they really do. So if you're out there and you can help, please do. I mean, even Kleenex is something as simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you struggle keeping Kleenexes? Oh yeah, I'm and out I, right now. <laughs> and I go, I go buy Kleenexes on my own or sometimes I'll go get the big roll of to uh, toilet paper just uh -huh. so that they right. have something. Yeah. yeah. But nobody really understands how, you know, how much we really need to run schools. Right. So, all right, so buy the Coke because the school needs it. You know, like we'll set a goal for 2,000 and maybe yeah. we can do 3,000. That sure, would be great. Be great. 
Right, I'm getting the exposure out there. I appreciate it. All right, and so then uh, you also have what's called, uh, you were talking about it, a conduct party. Yeah. So tell them what a conduct party is and what you guys get to do. And it's this Friday, you said. Yeah, so, well, this Friday is the big one for the last semester. But okay. um, on a weekly basis, we do a conduct party every Friday afternoon. And it is um, dependent on the student's discipline and behavior and self-conduct through the week. Um, we have a conduct chart. It's a digital copy um, conduct chart that we keep up with. And, you know, if they don't do their homework, then they get a strike on the conduct chart. And if they, you know, are late for class, then they get a strike on the conduct chart. And if they don't have three by the end of the week, if they've, you know, conducted themselves appropriately right. for, for school, then they get to go to the conduct party every Friday. And those who have gotten in trouble throughout the week get to go to a detention hour. So um, they get to serve their time in detention while the other ones get to go to their conduct. So party. what do you do weekly? Because this one's uh, moving and Steve Moreno. So yeah. I'm assuming that's like a whole big thing, yeah, not a that's, weekly. That, that's, that's for the, the first the, semester. Yeah, that's if you've made it to every conduct party for the first semester. And we'll do something at the end of the second semester. How many kids get to go to that uh, one? I think we've got... Got about 50. About 50. So close to half, half of our of school. school. Mm -hmm. So which is pretty good. Yeah. Um, you know... The main thing that we wanted to do was this covers a lot of kind of minor infractions, I guess, mm -hmm. but it's right. stuff that, that needs to be addressed. And so we felt that this was the best way to address it and to kind of, you know, whether it's leaving stuff out in the hallway by your locker or, or coming to class prepared or just anything like that, that that middle schoolers often struggle with, you know, right. and those life skills and those things they need to learn, and it's a good way for us to kind of positively reinforce that. So what do you guys do on normal Fridays? Not the big Friday, but what do you guys do on a normal Friday for a reward? Um, on pretty days, we'll, you know, take them outside and let them play. Right, or they um, can go to the gym, and I know they had a basketball tournament one time, or, mm -hmm. you know, or we'll have a... Movies we'll have and a, popcorn uh, you know, in the auditorium. Just like a movie so you just like, on an, like, like an alternative schedule on Fridays? Yeah, yeah, basically. Basically, after lunch, we we kind of do it a little bit different on Fridays. Okay. From about one o'clock to three. So, have you seen a significant difference in? I think with a, with a good bit of our kids, we have. You know, I mean, there you're always going to have some issues that that something like that's not going to address. But I think on the whole, I, I think we've seen a lot a less lot, tardiness, a lot more homework. Right. You know, a lot more people doing their homework. A lot more people, yeah, a lot more people being prepared for class, mm -hmm. having their pencil, having their paper, cleaned up lockers. Uh, you know, um, so I, I, th I think that has been a, a big positive for us. Mm -hmm. oh, did you guys? Where'd you get this? Is it like a curriculum that's out there or something? No, like actually, that? Um, we were discussing what to do with. You know, we knew we had this issue back in I think October is when we decided yeah. to do it. Uh, we had a PD day, and we all we all met just to try to figure out something. a plan to to make something work that was that was consistent across the board, and so that our expectations were clear and that everybody understood where we were at. That's and good. she, uh, you know, Miss Madgen, when she was at Albertville, they were using this. So yeah, a system almost. Just she like kind of introduced us to it. We we tweaked it a little bit, made it. You know, we we can set whatever categories we want, and kind of went from there. And uh, the for the know. for the most, the kids know, and and they responded, they responded well. So it's kind of it. like having an afternoon of fun Friday. Sure. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Can I steal it? <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. I'll yeah. borrow it if it works. Yeah, that would be good. Okay, and then uh, your 21st century during the summer, you were going to talk mm -hmm. about what they get to do. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah, it's gonna, it's going to be a, it's going to be a six week summer program, uh, I think. And I know one of their field trips they're going to Legoland, in Atlanta. They're really excited. I didn't even know about we had that. a Legoland in Atlanta. When uh, did we get that? Does anybody know? I don't know. I didn't know that till today. I, I was talking to either. our 21st century uh, director, and she was telling me about that. They're going to. Uh, go to Mayfield Dairy one day. That's so fun. It, in the summer, you know, once a week they've got a pretty big trip on the way that, that that program's set up and then they'll take other small trips. I know I think in Winchester, Tennessee, there's a little there's a water park kind of splash pad type thing right. that that they're going to go to. Um, and this is all free for these kids, right? Um or is there a small fee? I think there's a, there is a small fee, but uh, you know, a lot of times 
that can qualify for either a for either that to be free or waived or right. a lot of times one thing I really want to brag on our community about is they, they do a good job of stepping up when a kid needs to be sponsored Sometimes. for something like that I know we've got our local churches and our Lions Club and our little group called Citizens United Better Bridgeport and our city our city council they they really if they see a need there they step up and they feel it um, and if they see that we need something at the school, they try to make sure that we get it. Um, and it's great to being able to have partners like that. That is good. Because without it, I mean, schools and teachers don't get very sure. far. Mm -hmm. you know, but I mean, we've got people that, you know, they have no no real tie to any of the students there or anything like that. They just want help. Just want to make a difference. Uh, and it, it helps. It does, and it's, it's great yeah. being up from a community that, that does that. Now, are you homegrown? I mean, that you're I from am, there yes. too, and are you from there too? I'm not from Bridgeport, but I'm from Jackson County. Okay. I grew up in um, Hollywood area. I yeah. went to Scottsboro schools, but okay, grew up in Jackson County. So yeah. it's kind of close. Yeah, right? I mean, I'm, oh, they're right beside each other. Yeah. Oh, are they? Yeah, yeah. How but many teachers do you have that are, I guess, homegrown or from? We've got. I mean, that's what I've noticed right. after interviewing all year, sure. is that a lot of you guys are from the locate right there. The majority of our teachers are from Jackson County, um, I think, all of ours, but but one are from our county. But, you know, being from Bridgeport, I think we've got three on our staff that are. Um, but, you know, our county just geographically is, is huge. Right. I mean, it's... <laughs> I think it's the third largest county in the state of Alabama, and yeah. uh, so I mean, there's a lot of a lot of area there, I guess, to cover. But um, you know, and it's it's good because I mean, you get you get good investment in in our school and our community when it's yeah. like that. It makes a difference, I think. Okay, so the last thing we have just a few more minutes left. Let's talk about spring sports coming mm -hmm. up. And I know you guys don't have any spring sports we talked right. about. But you guys are feeder. Sure. I mean, some of your kids get to go to the... Yeah, our kids go to North Jackson to, to compete in uh, in their spring sports. Uh, if they, if they want to run track or if they want to play softball or, or baseball or anything like that, they'll go to the high school and, and do it with the high school team okay. usually on the JV. I know baseball's got a middle school team. I think with softball they play on the on the junior varsity, um, so they're they're getting ready to start all that. I know we're at the end of basketball season yeah. right now, and so within the next two or three weeks, all that'll be getting started. Do you up. have basketball at your school, or is the basketball still? We have basketball there? at our school, but it it finishes before Christmas. Okay. So um, we just finished that up a couple months ago. How'd you guys end up? And not not the best year, but uh, our kids got better every every game and competed and worked and kind of was just learning and, and did what and you know. And to me, that as long as as long as you're giving your best effort and you're competing and working together as a team, then, then good things are going to happen. And you're going to get good lessons out of it. Well, I know this: whether they win or not, they're going to learn teamwork. Right. Mm -hmm. And teamwork is everything. Absolutely. Because not only in school but in business. And any job you, know you have, have you have to know how to work with. That's what the kids. I don't, you know, I pair them up. I'm sure you do the same thing, but I don't. I'm like, it doesn't matter because there's, you know, right. as adults, we don't always get to work with, you know, exactly who we right. choose. This yep. is the way life is. Yeah. So. All right. Anything else we need to talk about? We have a couple minutes left that I've missed. That do we have anything else for field trips going on that we didn't talk no, about? No, I think that's about it. That's I know we've got the uh, the siege at Bridgeport, which is our Civil War reenactment that. Oh, that's cool. That happens every year. That do the um, kids get involved in that? Our kids get to go. Every, our kids go every year, um, the Friday before the reenactment. Uh, the guy, the the brothers that started that. Uh, one of them, he's he's a longtime coach and history teacher at Bridgeport Middle. Uh, he passed away a few years ago, but I mean he was my coach, uh, Jerry McGraw, and then his brother Joe John, who still was helping with our football team and. He's still actively involved in that. That's it's cool. at their farm, and you know it was it was something that that uh, Coach McGraw wanted to make sure that our, that our kids were involved in always, and uh, so th it is pretty cool that we get some exposure to that, and that'll be coming up at the end kids. of March. That's just good for the kids, mm -hmm. especially to help like with your social studies and to give oh, them yeah. some sure. real world stuff. So. Yeah. Well, guys, thanks for coming on today. Well, thank you. Well, thank you for having us. So, um, and just a quick shout out, he's a new dad. 
I couldn't go without it. Brand new baby. It's in the audience. (laughs) Tiny little baby. Very cute. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. We'll see you next week. All right.